Hey kids, it's Englantine here with another top 10 reasons the 1990s didn't suck. So, everybody's got their own list. This is mine. Let me know yours in the comments below. And also, don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification button. Now, most of these titles lived and died in the 1990s, with very rare exception. So, don't forget also to check out that first video I did. And without further ado, let's get this party started. Number 10, Milestone Comics. Now, Image may have been the most popular, but to tell you the truth, most of their books sucked during the early 90s. Milestone, on the other, other hand, uh, was helmed by Dwayne McDuffie, who was <laughs> excellent, God rest his soul. And it had titles like Icon and Hardware and The Blood Sended Kid. Of course, it had Static, which was a great comic book in itself, yet a lot of people know it by the cartoon. Now, personally, I was not the audience they were going for. I understand that. However, I found all the stories to be... Uh, they, they were really good. They were really strong. And there was a little bit of uh, edginess to it that I liked. The art was always dark and kind of gritty. So it was very entertaining. And even though it was released by w DC Comics, it was they were owned privately. They were just published through DC Comics. It definitely felt like its own universe, like its own world. And the characters, yeah, just like everything, some were better than others. I loved Static, same as everybody else, loved Static. The Blood Syndicate was basically a street gang and I, I, I dug those also. And of course they had their own Superman, which I thought was the more boring of the characters. I've got Superman if I wanted Superman. So it really didn't stand out to me. Otherwise, Milestone Comics, if you can find them in trade paperback form or if you can find them in single issue, they're definitely worth picking up. Number 9. Batman the Nightfall Saga. Man, people hated John Paul Valley, who came went on, on to be Azrael. But this story was excellent. I actually enjoyed the years with John Paul Valley because the whole purpose was to show... It was just one of the stories that was trying to show the difference between the heroes of old and the, and the new ones, the, the ones that aren't uh, opposed to killing, the more violent heroes. And that was the whole point of the Jean-Paul Valley section of the, uh, of the Nightfall Saga. And the brilliance of this is before this came out, you had two things, the Sword of Azrael miniseries and the Vengeance of Bane one-shot that nobody knew what they were and didn't care about them, but those of us lucky enough to pick them up ended up having some gems and of course, for those who are uninitiated, this is the famous uh, Batman Gets His Back Broken storyline that introduced us to Bane. But basically it was Batman versus all of his major villains as Bane released them from Arkham Asylum before he attacked it. The whole point was that he tired Batman down before he faced him. And it ended up being a fun and very exciting storyline that lasted for years. I mean, if you want to pick up the trades, there are three enormous trades for $30 each, so you're definitely going to get a lot of reading out of it, and it's definitely worth the money. Number 8. The Batman Adventures Mad Love. This is the origin of Harley Quinn, and this is an Eisner Award-winning book, so take that as you may. And, and that meant something before Mockingbird got nominated this year. Anyway, like I said, this is the origin of Harley Quinn, and it is just a ton of fun. So, uh, the Joker has Commissioner Jordan, G Commissioner Jordan, I've never read a comic book, Commissioner Gordon, and Batman foils his plan. So he's thinking, okay, I've got to come up with a, a good plan to kill Batman. It's got to be a, a big spectacle kind of thing. And he's having a hard time. Harley Quinn's annoying him, so he kicks him out, kicks her out. And she wants to please him. She wants to get back in the good graces. And this really does show the, the uh, harsh relationship between the two of them. They really do love each other, but it is definitely not a healthy relationship. So she decides to come up with a plan to kill Batman that would end up pleasing the Joker. Something that he hadn't thought of before. And the, the book is amazing. It, it definitely deserves every bit of praise that it's gotten and if you have not yet checked it out check it out if you have checked it out already you know i speak the truth number seven the golden age written by james robinson drawn by paul smith is just amazing and boy is it thick 
It's only four issues long, but it is a read. It's hard to describe the plot. Just to say that it's a reemergence of the Golden Age heroes. The government wants to create this one Superman kind of hero. And so they find a nobody. He ends up being uh, like the, the golden boy of everybody, uh, of the, the government. And he's a war hero and such. And it's mystery. There's a mystery to it. It's just deep. This book is deep. That's a great way of saying it. And it's an Elseworld, so it's outside of continuity. But it was so good that Jeff Johns and other writers started putting uh, bits and pieces of this continuity into it. Check it out. You will love it or else. No, I'm just kidding. But no, seriously, this is such a great series. I'm going to read it after this. Number six. So ever since Thanos showed up at the end of the Avengers movie, we've been hearing about the Infinity Gauntlet. And it's basically uh, he gets hold of the gauntlet and he wipes out half the universe. That's, that's how it began. He kills half the universe. And let me tell you something. As somebody who was up and running around the 1990s and collecting all the comics, this book had us riveted. This is what we would talk about at the counters at the, uh, when, we're, when we were buying our comic books. This was the story. It was, it was just, it kept you on the edge of your seat. And it had its crossovers and such like that, but it wasn't intrusive. It wasn't like it is nowadays where you have to buy 60,000 more tiles and such. It was just, we got to see people bust ass through it. I mean, it's amazing. In the final fight and such, the way Captain America was portrayed was something. It's one of the things that made me just love the character all over again. It's uh, exciting. It's intriguing. It was intense. It had suspense to it. This is definitely, before you see the movie and you get it in your head what it's all supposed to be about, get the trade paperback for the Infinity Gauntlet and check that out by itself. You will not be disappointed. True confession time. When I first read Preacher, I did not like it. And I'll tell you why. Around this time, Vertigo stopped realizing what made it good and all the books were weird for weirdness sake instead of like kids you had books like Sandman come out and the uh, swamp thing and everything and they were really excellent stories great stories but then it seemed like people forgot that you need excellent stories and just thought well you need weird stories so I read the first few preacher and there is a kid who shot himself in the face because of Kurt Cobain you had an obviously profane vampire, the preacher that was uh, going against his uh, faith and such like this. And it just, the, the first read, I thought, well, it, 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 it's more of the same. They want to be shocking instead of good. So I never really read past the first few issues until a uh, few years down the line when everybody was like, oh, it was so good, it was so good. I was like, okay, I'll give it a second try. And boy, was I stupid the first time. This book is so deep and so intense uh, it, it just begs you you have to read the entire series there's no one book you can point to and say well that's the trade paperback you should get that uh, it is just one read it from beginning to end you're gonna love it uh if you are not of the faint of heart number four valiant comics was definitely one of the best comic book companies that were created in the 90s and there were a lot of independent companies in the 80s and the 90s that, that came out more than you probably would know uh, obviously they're being re released now and you know a lot of the characters I loved the Shadow Man Archer and Armstrong was funny at the time it had some great stories I enjoyed Rye Bloodshot unfortunately he fell into the uh, whole uh, hero with a gun crowd whether it was intended or not so that one was okay but solar was excellent exo man of war was excellent just on and on the stories were very very good and i remember people were crazy for these things always looking for rye one and two because those were supposed to be hard to find exo man of war one and two i mean it was just like it was a it was a shopping frenzy for people who wanted to find these books it was awesome number three Kingdom Come, the four-issue miniseries. This was, I, I, I keep using this word, amazing. 
This I like this one better than Marvel's, although Marvel's is very, very good also. These were like the top two miniseries of the 90s to me. And what I, I mean, this is the, basically the same story as I was talking about with Nightfall. It's where you are seeing the dichotomy between the modern day anti-hero, the kill first and ask questions never, versus the classic Superman. You know, Superman would never kill somebody, so, you know, what's the which is the proper way to go in this case it gets everybody in on it the heroes the villains the um the government every at the end there's this big huge uh brawl with every side of the political fence on this it it is deep it's a lot more wordy than marvel's but it's an interesting thing and, and just seeing where all the heroes are in the future and such is very much worth it uh, the art is obviously incredible there is hardly a, a bad word you could say about this miniseries. It's intense. It's awesome. If you have not yet checked it out, you should. Number two. Starman by James Robinson again. He shows up. Uh, this is a story of fathers and sons. Um, basically, it's in, in the guise of a superhero story. You have a father who is a classical, famous super, uh, Superman, superhero called Starman. He passes it on to his oldest son, who ends up getting killed. No spoiler alert, it happens like in the first three pages. And then it comes down to his next son. And he's reluctant to pick it up, but he wants to have, have his father's love. So he does. But what happens when your average Gen Xer is not so willing to risk his neck for people? Or, you know... This, in all honesty, the writing here is also a precursor to Brian K. Vaughn with all the uh, pop culture references. It is definitely a character first book. So every action and reaction is based on what the character would do. There is hardly ever any, any time in the series where you get the feeling like the character is doing that because the writer told them. And it is crisp writing, some great storytelling here. And the art is not bad either. It's got a nice dark tone to it without ever going into the grim and gritty. So definitely pick this one up. You can find them in omnibus form now. They cost a lot, but they're definitely worth the money. And the number one reason the 90s didn't suck, at least for this list, is Jeff Smith's Bone. This is one epic series, hands down. And what it looks like on the covers is not the story you're going to get. Somewhat it is. If I were to describe this, and it would be hard to describe this, it would have to be three schmoo-like versions of the Marx Brothers arrives in a valley where they end up in a battle that involves dragons and rat creatures and a cow racing grandma. It's insane. But it's funny, and it's fun, and... It starts off so light, but as it goes, it gets darker and darker. It still retains the humor that it had in the beginning, but the adventure becomes more and more epic as it goes on until there's just a crescendo. This is storytelling at its best, and it's definitely four-color storytelling at its best, even though in originally it was black and white. But you can get them color now. And it would be worth it. Either way, you're not losing. This isn't like the movies where if you colorize It's a Wonderful Life or uh, Casablanca, it's weird. It, it fits. Obviously, you see right here. And, and, and it's amazing. If you've got young kids you want to get interested in re reading, throw this book at them. If you're an adult and just want to have fun reading, read this book. Get the omnibus. That way you don't have to interrupt the story. It, it is so good. Definitely one of my, if not my favorite series of the 90s. Amazing book. So there you go. Another list of 10 reasons the 90s didn't suck. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did I put on that you would have left off? What did I leave off that you would have put on? Let me know in the comments below. Also, what was the worst thing you read in the 90s? Put that in the comments below as well. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Also, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. You could head on over to VidMe, give a little tip, I wouldn't hate you for it, but most important, thank you for watching.